I'm Louise Rowe and welcome to The Sherlock Show. Today we are chatting skincare rules, how to balance careers and passions and all things weddings. But first let me introduce our amazing guests. I'm joined by UN Goodwill Ambassador and founder of beauty brand Sable Labs, Sabrina Elba, digital creator Patricia O'Dwyer and lawyer and fashion contributor Angela Lay. Well, what a lineup! First of all, this is amazing. We've got so much to talk about. Um, welcome, ladies. Thank Having a good you. morning so far. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You travelled from North London in those shoes. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I, I brought these. I brought these in to channel my inner Barbie energy today. So yeah. Yeah. So no one's seen Barbie yet. No one's seen no. Barbie. Okay. So on the radar. So much. Yes. I feel like it's impossible for yes. it not to be on the yes. radar. Oh, I think yeah. I've been excited for a year. Why am I so excited like about that. it? I don't. I sort of. I'm. I am too, but I don't really know why. I love pink. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that alone excites me. Yeah. Yeah. Margot excites me. Yes. Ryan true. excites me a little true. more. <laughs> but Margot, like, yeah, yes. she's quite excited. I feel like Greta <laughs> excites me as well, though. Yeah. Like, I think it's just the combination. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, it has to be good. Marketing genius. So good. All the stuff we've seen. Um, Sabrina, I want to talk first about beauty. Okay. Let's do it. Skincare. So we were just saying you. Your, your brand was in preparation research for four years. Oh my gosh, yeah. So we, it was like pretty much the start of COVID, which I can't believe it's even been that long. It feels like we, we were just in the pandemic, yes. which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But yeah, so d the development of it and, the pro and figuring out what it was going to be because, we, you know, it was all about community and, and us focusing on what wellness looks like for us before we even knew it was going to be skincare. So it was this long journey of just sort of discovery within ourselves and finding, you know, what, what felt like a gap in the market for people that look like myself and deal with issues like hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. and inflammation on melanated skin and then feeling like these issues aren't included in sort of the luxe skincare options that we see or it's kind of super niche in that luxe brand or yeah. it's like in the black aisle, excuse me, of like a Walmart or a Target. So just trying to make something of quality and with ethos in the mass stage market took us a little while. Yeah. And now I'm really glad that we did it because it feels like we birthed this brand that I can be really proud of. Let's have a look then. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like showing off your yes, skin. Yes, so I bet it's, it is. It is You've so been pregnant exciting. four years. This is the baby. <laughs> Okay, so we really wanted to focus on, and I feel so funny to say, but mom is always right, right? Like that's kind of slightly part of our ethos because I watch my mom sort of mix all these gorgeous African ingredients. Like I mean, you're East African yeah. as well. Things like kassel, which you might not have heard of, which mm -hmm. is like an East African staple, baobab, I like sat under baobab trees. Kassel is in our cleanser, so it's a natural soap and it's also antibacterial, but it's got really great anti-inflammatory properties because it's like 10 times as powerful an antioxidant as vitamin C, oh, for wow. instance. Yeah, so introducing people to Kassel, but seeing it mixed with things like cow and clay and like, you know, and oat amino and no surfactants and for it to all be vegan and pregnancy safe and cruelty free and, you know, very sustainably and responsibly sourced feels like really good. So we have our cleanser and then we have a toner, which I want to spray on you because that's the effect that it has on people. <laughs> give it a go. It's new, so give, let me give it a... <laughs> Thank you so. for saving me. <laughs> You're big fat drops. But look at this. Oh. Ooh, You're good. good. <laughs> you, she is good. <laughs> so black seed toner. And Ooh, because the, we wanted the brand to fight hyperpigmentation from all angles, which actually all skin types suffer from, but people look at it like it's a melanated issue. But sunspots, you know, melasma, mm -hmm. all this falls into like an overproduction of melanin. So looking at fighting the inflammation at the root, breaking down the excess melanin, and then protecting the skin barrier. Black seed is a really, really great anti-inflammatory as well. But this also acts like a gentle exfoliant. So people are like, why are you using a toner? And I'm like, this is more than a toner. This is a treatment, essence, whatever you want to call it. But you need this on your desk, everyone at Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> and you can spray it all day. And the vitamin C just gives you that nice instant glow. It really does smell yummy. And all fragrance free. Mm. And then we've got, see, now I'll talk forever. Look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more and questions. I know. Then we've got our moisturizer, which is like, I love. And this is really the breaking up all the melanin. So it's got all of the great, like, niacinamide and tranexamic acid and all that good stuff. And it feels really good. Did you work in like, beauty I before? Try I want to try <laughs> You know, I had a lot of time during COVID. Okay. No, <laughs> so because you, you yeah. are, you sound 
incredibly knowledgeable. Oh, oh my thanks. Gosh. Well, you know, I, I genuinely wanted that to learn so as much as soaking. I could. Oh my gosh, that yeah. feels amazing. It absorbs so easily as <laughs> and well. And that was what yeah. we wanted. I wanted it to like, not your hair to stick to it and you can put it on and it's just like quick absorption, but you still get all the moisture. Because I think we think if it's super greasy, that's when it's yeah, really yeah. moisturizing, yeah. but actually you don't need to have all of that glycerin or whatever they are using to really thicken it up for it to absorb. So I, yeah, I learned as much as I could. I'm also like taking courses to be an esthetician because I want to give people facials. Good for you. Oh, this is weird. I know, I love. And then I think I want to like eventually learn even more, like down to the formulations. But we knew what we wanted. We went to the formulators with our formulation saying we want all these actives and we want these beautiful okay. A beauty ingredients, which we're trying to highlight on each product. Um, so just sitting down and trying to learn as much as I could kind of gave me that self education. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You're and then talking to everyone in the industry. I probably have questions for you after this. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's going to be a long show, guys. I love it. Um, your best beauty trick. Okay, my best beauty trick is um, to put your moisturizer on while your skin is still wet, I think. I think people underestimate oh that. Gosh. I was not prepared for that. Okay. I know. I Why? feel like I've been doing it so much lately just because you get a better absorption. Okay. Um, and someone taught me that, and now I just can't stop doing it. And I don't know if it's a little bit of a placebo as well, but now mm. I'm like, quick, yeah. go. <laughs> my um, face is still anything wet. you'd never do. Beauty wise, go to bed with makeup on. Okay, no, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Double cleansing is a big one for yeah, me now. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Things you always do. Uh, lash extensions. So we were talking about your d beautiful demi wispies before we started, but like I switched to individual extensions, and now if I don't have them, I don't know who I am. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> I'm not leaving isn't the it? house. Yeah. Okay, and favorite product could be yours, could be something else. Yeah, well, actually, well, at the moment I have like this. Okay, this is gonna look so fancy. I'm not always this fancy, but this Chanel foundation I've just discovered. Have you guys seen this one? It's a concealer, but I've been using it. Oh, actually, I've been looking for a foundation. That looks amazing. This is so good. Is it good? It's oh. so good because you so need like the teeniest bit. Teeny, is it and then, and it's got the fanciest name now. It's like Sublimage. Oh, that looks gorge. But I love like an old school kind of like, I don't know, it makes me feel like it's a bit 90s with the pot. And yeah, yeah, I think she's yeah. very good at that. Yeah, so it comes yeah. with a really good brush. Oh, nice. That is the only thing is you've got to wash your brush every like two seconds. <laughs> but that's my little... I love see it. How, see how I was ready? You so, were so prepped for that one. Yeah. You guys, quick I thought round. About Any favorite beauty tricks or hacks? Oh, I would say you have already mentioned it. Double cleansing is a mm. big one for me because I feel like I'm prone to breakouts sometimes and double cleansing really helped that. And I think product-wise, Obagi always works yeah. well for my skin. Yeah, Obagi cleanses yes, down. That's a good one. Yeah. I've been into their spa before. It's yeah. amazing. Really good. I feel like I'm so late to the game with this because everybody's been obsessed with it forever. But I was recently sent the Glossier Future Dew mm -hmm. and I can't get enough of it. Like it's my favorite thing when I'm not wearing any makeup, which what is, is it? it's just like, a, like, like this is awful. It's BB like, yeah, it's like a BB cream, kind of but it's not like, I feel like I have other BB creams that look great, but are kind of like still quite heavy. Mm. And it's literally, it's just like, I don't know, it's just like a bit of a gloss for your Ooh, face. It just makes me feel very plump. Glossier what? Future Dew. Ooh. Yeah, it's great. Nice. Added to cut. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Spent more money now. Um, <laughs> Polly Sayer is showing us next how to make a summer dress work harder just by changing up the accessories. Take a look. Hello, I'm Polly Sayer, and today I'm here to show you some of my favourite day to night dresses and how to style them. My first pick is this little mini dress, which is by a brand called Road. I'm obsessed with the shape of it. It's got a little bit of ruffle going on here and these big sleeves. And it's a nice lightweight cotton, which makes it good for hot days in the summer. For the daytime, I'm gonna wear these little strappy sandals, which are from Ancient Greek Sandals. And to finish the look, I'm gonna go with my little Loewe bag and some cat eye sunnies for a bit of drama. If I was dressing it up for the evening, I'd stick with the strappy vibe with the shoes, but just go for a white heel and add this little pearly shrimps bag just to add some interest. Next up is this halter neck Zara dress, which is a gorgeous khaki linen, um, really good for the summer again. I think you could dress it up for the office a little bit with a blazer like this and sort of tonal vibe. This is Jacquemus. It's on sale at the moment at Netaporter, so run, don't walk. Uh, these little mesh ballet flats, I think are gonna divide opinion, but I really love them and I think they make any outfit feel a little bit cooler, so maybe worth a go. And then just finishing the look with this gigantic basket bag, which is from hunting season. 
I think it's also the perfect dress to dress up for like a wedding maybe. So just add these raffia platform heels, which are Luffle Randall, they're amazing. Some sort of pearlescent little earrings, which are completed works. And finally, a matching raffia bag, which is so cool. It's got a bit of shell detail on there just to add some interest. Next up is this zebra print mini dress, which is from Realization Par. I'm obsessed with this dress. I wear it so often because it's just so easy to throw on. For the daytime like this, I usually go for um, a pair of cowboy boots. I love black and white vibes, kind of like ties in with the dress. These are Ganny. And then I usually add a big oversized jacket over the top, like this bike jacket from the Frankie shop. I think it's quite a cool grungy vibe. And then to finish things off, I go for a pair of 90s inspired sunnies. These are Gucci. For the evenings, you could keep a biker jacket on, but sometimes it's nice to smarten things up with an oversized black blazer, then add a little pair of black burly there, strappy heels, and finish things off. Usually a little 90s inspired baguette bag. This is Fendi. And my final pick for today is a black dress from Zara. It's got some cool cutouts here, which are stretchy, so nice and comfortable. Really easy one to throw on for the daytime with a khaki jacket. This one is from Arquette. Some Birkenstock style sandals. These ones are actually Isabel Morant, but Birkenstocks would also work just fine. And this little raffia sling bag, which I wear on repeat, which is also from Arquette. Start out online at the moment, but if you try the Regent Street Store, you might get lucky. I think the cutouts mean that this dress is evening appropriate too, so I would just switch out flat sandals for a pair of strappy white ones. Some big statement gold earrings to add something extra to the look. And finally, a white clutch bag just to match in with the shoes. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these dresses and the looks that went with them. I'd love to hear which one was your favorite in the comments. such good inspo especially if you've got no time to change just throw on a spare pair of shoes clutch massive earring someone's doing that today <laughs> nailing it now one definite thing we all have in common is that we don't have one particular career path but we all have multiple roles that we juggle and we work alongside each other so i wanted to ask how do you guys manage the balance and i should probably delete the word balance right there and then <laughs> <laughs> angela i'm going to start with you okay lawyer yes what kind of lawyer well, um, I worked in a firm. We focused primarily on human rights, sanctions, immigration, and extradition. And we also have a sister firm where I work mostly in um, as a general counsel. So I handhold clients and deal with all their legal affairs in the UK. This is amazing. And then yeah, on top yeah. of that, just side note, Queen. side gig. <laughs> You're also column fashion columnist for Forbes. Yes. I fell into that sort of, you know, by accident. but. You know, going back to when I was little, I was always into fashion. I wanted to be a designer. I always was that kid who wants to wear a skirt without stockings in, on the coldest day in winter, right? <laughs> so, um, but you know, growing up in the Chinese family, I was always told to study something serious. So I did finance, economics, law, I got my career today. But I also, also found myself drifting further and further away from fashion, which I really love. And uh, you know, the only connection I had was as consumer. So I think it was 2015, 2014, one of my friends said, you know, I knew an editor in Forbes and they're looking to branch out their contributor network online. And you know, back then, most of the press is actually paper-based. And I jumped at the chance. I was like, would they consider me, you know? So she helped me set up an interview over the phone call because they're based in the US and they liked something I've written for another platform. They liked my social media. I had probably 50 followers back then, you know? And, um, and then I got it. So I was like, this is amazing. I started writing. But being someone in the law firm as a junior at the time, I really was, you know, I didn't have enough time to write that often. So I probably had a bit of a hiatus, I would say for two years leading up to 2020. And then we all know what happened. The pandemic was here. I went from traveling to the Far East for business eight or nine times a year to not traveling at all, from meeting clients every day to not meeting anyone. So I all of a sudden have all this free time at hand. And I think my husband probably sick of watching me 
looking restless and listening to Justin Bieber 10 times a day, <laughs> said, um, you know, why don't you start writing again? I was like, oh my God, it's such a great idea. And we got married in Ibiza not long before then. So, and I remember thinking, I want to share this gem of a store that I love so much that no one knew back then yet. Well, not no one knew, but not as huge as today. And that was Annie's Ibiza. So I wrote about that store and everybody was scrolling online during the pandemic. So a lot of people saw that. And I all of a sudden have all these people reaching out to me, sharing their stories. And, and I've never looked back. It has brought me so much joy. Um, it inspires me on a daily basis because all these founder stories, all the inspirations behind their newest collections, it just brought back all these memories and the love I had for fashion. So now I wouldn't say it's a balancing um, act if you're doing what you love. It feels like if I'm writing an article at night or attending something over the weekend, it just feels like an added bonus rather than work. So yeah, Aww. so it was amazing. I do love that approach because I yeah. think sometimes the physicality of fitting it into a day, it has to be addressed in the sense that I get up extremely early most days and I fit, fit a couple of hours in before the kids wake up, which isn't sustainable forever. But like you, I'm really passionate. So yeah. it kind of is a different mm. feeling of going to your desk, not mm. like, oh God, I've got to finish yeah. this, but I'm kind of buzzed actually. And maybe yeah. that's 17 coffees I've had as well. <laughs> um, but you know, do you have any tips yeah. for, for fitting it all in? I'm kind of the same, I think I, do bits when I wake up in the morning and then when Ossley goes to sleep at night, obviously, so I've got a, a, like a part-time job. I work for a marketing agency and then I'm a content creator for myself and um, work with a couple of different um, publications or platforms. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing. It's kind of like in the morning, during nap time, on the days that I'm with Ossley, like literally she goes down and I'm like, go, go, go. And then my husband's like, why is, why is the house a tip? <laughs> <laughs> and then after bedtime. But I think to, to your point as well, it is like it's full on. And obviously there are days that I'm like, I also would love to just nap when she's napping. But it's fun and it's like what I want to be doing. So it's very different. Like, like you said, it's very different yeah. to being like, oh, I've got to sit down again. It's like, oh, I get yeah. to do the stuff that I love. Mm. So I, do, I think there's a lot of pressure placed on women, whether you're a yeah. mother or a working mother or, you know, whatever the combination totally. is. And I listened to a great podcast this week. It was a short, like 11 minutes. I was like, that's my bite size. Um, and it was like, forget this sort of balance or, or what we should all aspire to. It's, it, it's so individual. It's, it's about you and you only mm. and what makes you happy. And I think I think as a woman especially you know when you're not feeling quite balanced and you I know I know for me it's like I haven't had enough time with the kids this week right I need to sort of reset that it's sort of gone too much that way or whatever but do you have any tips for that I need to listen of... to that because I'm, I'm I'm listening and hoping by like osmosis I absorb <laughs> <laughs> like because I'm finding it really hard I'm finding it really hard to balance home and work yeah because yeah. I feel I'm pulling too much away from my husband if I'm focusing too much on work and then I'm pulling away from work if I'm, you know, and it's, I, I haven't quite figured it out. So I'm going to be like writing things. <laughs> but starting a, your own brand is a whole new different game. It, it is. so it consuming. Is. You, you consumes your life, you know. It does. And I think one of the best things we did is start it together and start things together because it allows us to have like this shared dream and goal that we can pool energy into um, rather than just being like, okay, my day was completely separate from yours. Yeah. We're both too tired to ask how yeah. each other's was. And then it's like bedtime, start again in yeah. the morning. So having something that we can do together has really helped. Yeah. I wonder if with the kids, if, if you're finding something that you're doing together, I mean, school runs, you can't avoid it. <laughs> no, it's so. true. I'm taking my five-year-old actually to um, an, a big art exhibition this Sunday and I it's probably a bit grown up for her but I was like let's try it let's see it's because then it's honest, your world for her the best part's going on the tube oh, <laughs> that's the most, not on the escalator that's the most exciting part I used but, to think that, I used to think escalators were the funnest thing when I was a kid exactly. what? that's her in a nutshell forget about all the art but I just thought it's time isn't yeah. it it's just time that's all it is anyway. Oh, we've, well, we've solved that. Um, from career <laughs> advice to love advice, Mel Schilling of Maths Fame answers all of your relationship and dating queries with Charlotte. Take a look. If you're a Married at First Sight fan, I'm sure my next guest needs absolutely no introduction. Mel Schilling is a specialist in human behaviour and performance. She's built a 20-year career as a therapist, business consultant and leadership coach for high-performing people and since 2016 she has been a coach on an explosive dating show, Married at First Sight, Australia and more recently the UK edition. She is well known for calling out bad behaviour and holding people accountable from the sofa. 
So what better person to chat to about love life dilemmas? Welcome, Mel. Oh, thank you for having me. Not at all. Thanks for being here. Okay. Um, we put something out on our socials to ask people to send in their questions uh -huh. for you. So we've basically got a whole load of dating dilemmas. I love it. That we're going to hit you with. Okay. Bring it on. Okay. So number one, single mid thirties, how to meet someone. Ah. <sighs> Okay. The age old question, right? It is, it is. Mm. Okay, the first question to ask yourself is, what do I actually want? Mm. If you're single and in your 30s and you're just wanting some fun, you're just wanting some casual hookups, there are so many apps available for that. Sure. You know, you can swipe your way to all the great sex mm -hmm. you could possibly <laughs> handle. But if you're wanting a committed relationship, and I suspect this is what... I feel like that's the implication. That's right? yeah. the implication. Then my advice is a little harsh, it is get all of those apps off your phone right now. Mm -hmm. So you want to remove all of that temptation mm -hmm. because, of course, every time one of those pings, you get that little hit of dopamine mm -hmm. and you are drawn toward it and it is taking you off your path. Okay. So if your path is relationship, get rid of the distractions. So even though those apps are, you know, and people do meet and form romantic relationships from the apps, you think generally best avoided? Choose the right apps. Okay. So of course, different apps have different functions mm -hmm. and some are fantastic for that casual hookup. Mm -hmm. On the GPS, this person's 500 meters away, go do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the ones that are more geared toward relationships, yep. so the ones that ask those deeper questions about what you want, mm -hmm. your values, your personality, mm -hmm. your lifestyle, these are the ones that I would recommend investing a bit of time and money in. They're often not mm -hmm. the free ones. That's true. That's mm. true. I know a lot of people find those a bit soul destroying. Can you still meet people in real life? Like, is that still a thing? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can. And that is a question I hear a I'm lot. I'm sure. Because, of course, so much of our conversations are about online dating. Mm. What I would recommend doing is getting in touch with your own values. So what is it that's really, really important to you? Mm -hmm. Let's say you're into health. Well, wouldn't it be amazing to meet a partner who's also into health? Mm -hmm. Because... All of the research tells us that one of the highest predictors of com compatibility is shared values. Mm. So let's go with that health idea. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do? Maybe you join a gym. Maybe you get into a running group. Because the chances are that you're likely to click with people who share similar life goals and values. Target rich environment, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody has said, me and my girlfriends can't find guys who want to seriously date slash commit. Why? I mean, we don't want to stereotype, but again, bit of an age-old question, isn't it? But people have made many a TV show and film out of men who don't oh want to commit. Gosh. One interesting piece of advice is to not go out on the hunt when you're ovulating. Oh, okay, didn't expect that. Because yeah. when you're ovulating, you are more likely to be drawn towards those alpha male chest beaters. Okay, so this is, it's like caveman level stuff. Right, yeah. okay. right. Something in you mm. says, I'm preparing myself to become pregnant, mm -hmm. therefore I'm going to naturally choose the man okay. that is probably the loudest voice in the room, mm -hmm. probably not the best partner. Okay, so this is simple evolution <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, I live in Northern Ireland, zero men available in person or on apps. What are my options? What do you do when you live somewhere where there just are no, are no members of the opposite sex or whatever it is you're looking for? I married a Northern Irishman. <laughs> so you know a little bit about this. I've got one. <laughs> they do exist. I, they do exist, so although I found him in Australia, so oh, well, okay, probably, not, helpful, yeah. probably not on the same topic. Um, and this is common for people who live in remote areas. Mm -hmm. You know, We often hear this. These days, some of the good apps are very geared toward this. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm noticing now is a trend in online dating away from just the swipe mm -hmm. and the very... Um, image-based um, matching to something that's a little deeper mm. and a lot of video matching. So I think for people who are in remote areas, this mm. is a great functionality mm. because you can actually connect with someone, see whether there's chemistry before you make a trick. Okay, good mm. advice. Someone has said, how to get into the dating world when moving to a foreign country? What do you do if you're starting completely from scratch? Yeah, I love this mm. one. I think it's a great idea to start before you go. Um, so, for example, change the location mm. settings on the apps that you're using to See what's the out new there. place. Have exactly, a scout. Mm. go fishing. Do a recce. Sure, exactly. <laughs> Do a bit of a date recce. Yeah. Start to mm. get a taste. But also, I think really important to as quickly as possible establish your social network when you get there. Where do the people who are into fitness mm. or you know yoga where do they go mm -hmm. so learn as much absorb yourself in that culture so that you can get to know 
where the target rich environments will be. And also surely the more people you know, the bigger your network, the more likely you are to meet somebody. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's talk about dating. Someone has said, I'm dating someone who takes all the right boxes but lacks in the bedroom department. What do I do? Okay. How important really? is it? it it's a, this is a very important question. Mm. Essentially, it's the difference between a friendship and a relationship, mm. isn't it? But some people can put too much emphasis on the sexual mm-hmm. chemistry. There's such a thing as a slow burn. So I guess my first question would be to this person, I wonder how long you've been together mm. and have you allowed the chemistry to develop naturally? When people are compatible, so when they've got those aligned values, really similar sort of lifestyle preferences and goals in mm. life, the chemistry and the laughs tend to follow. It's kind of a given right. with those things. That's right. Yeah. It tends to come. So I guess the reverse of that can be that if there is not the sexual chemistry, mm. ask yourself those questions about, are we aligned? Does this person want the same out of life as I do? And if you can tick all of those boxes, then maybe it's worth sort of digging a bit deeper and trying to understand more about what's happening sexually. Seeing if it comes. What what about, what would you say to people who've been in a relationship where perhaps that spark was once there, but it's died? I mean, that's that's something, you know, again, a common theme, isn't it, It in long-term relationships? Work at it. Yeah. They don't call it a blow job for nothing. <laughs> it's a job. Yeah. It's work, That's right? Work and it absolutely on both on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is something where, you know, many of us are parents, we're busy, we have mm. big careers and lives. Putting a date night in the diary is probably one of the best things you can do. Mm. Um, speaking from experience, I was on one last night. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It does the job. It, it does. But you've got to commit to it. I know when we've interviewed people in the past as well, we've talked about scheduling sex uh-huh. and how that kind of, you know, sounds quite depressing, but actually is probably the best way to get over yeah. a dry spell. Right. And sometimes, and, and I hear that a lot too, and it can feel very clunky. Oh, it's Wednesday at eight o'clock. Yeah. We've got to do the <laughs> sex. What if you scheduled in, not the sex part, Mm. but just the connecting part, Mm. which more often than not will lead to sex anyway. Mm -hmm. But I find that takes a bit of that pressure off Mm. that, you know, okay, that's our date night or whatever. We're going to talk about our sexual fantasies together, Mm -hmm. for example, and share some of that intimate stuff that will bring us closer emotionally and maybe then sex will flow. So put in time for intimacy. Yeah. Okay, somebody has said how to... How to get back out there after heartbreak when you feel like you have no feelings left. Mm, That's sad. Yeah. I'm really going to hone in here on what she or or he says there about no feelings left. That concerns me. My gut feel on this one is that this person is not ready to get back Mm. into dating. You know, this sounds like a person who needs to spend some time investing back in Mm themselves. You know, I'm all for taking big, big breaks from dating. I don't think dating is something you need to or Mm -hmm. have to do every day because it takes a lot of resilience. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be if you've come out of a relationship and you're feeling like you've got nothing to give or you're a shell of yourself, don't date. Mm. Take a break. Take a break. Mm. Spend time with people who lift you up and reinvest in yourself. Rediscover what gives you joy Mm. in your life. Spend some time dating yourself and then get back out there. What's your advice for nailing a first date if you're underconfident what are you what's the best you know the best tips for feeling like you can do it okay well if we start from the outside and work in in terms of the way you present yourself Mm. so from a fashion perspective Mm -hmm. you know you talk to any woman and say what's what's your favorite part of your body and she'll just go blank (laughs) you say what's the part of your body you hate and she'll give you this whole list Mm -hmm. and it'll be in detail in 3d maybe even 4d (laughs) diagram right exactly (laughs) x-ray so Discover the thing, even if it's just one thing you like about your body, and highlight that mm-hmm. feature. That will help mm-hmm. from a confidence perspective, particularly if there's some body image you know, issues mm-hmm. going on there. Then think about your strengths. And something that works really, really well on a first date is let's say you know your top two strengths. Reflect back on your life and come up with two real stories that illustrate your strengths. So this does a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One is it will be engaging to the other person because we respond so well emotionally to storytelling. Mm -hmm. So when you're telling an actual story. And personal, like sharing personal details, right? That's what we do. Absolutely, yeah, Yeah, connecting Mm -hmm. on an emotional level. But also it will build your confidence because you're actually having a little brag. Mm -hmm. You know, it it may not feel like Mm -hmm. it, humble brag perhaps, but you're telling a story Mm -hmm. and it's illustrating something that you really like about Mm -hmm. yourself. 
That'll give you a boost. Okay. Someone has said, what are classic red flags and how many are too many? Mm. I like to divide red flags into two categories, global red flags and personal red flags. So the global ones are things that anyone mm -hmm. on the planet, maybe someone is demonstrating aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're being disrespectful to other people. Maybe they're sharing stories where they may be laughing at someone else's misfortune. Mm -hmm. So the kind of behaviors that could demonstrate someone is not a safe person mm -hmm. to be around. If any of those things come up, no matter who you are, walk away. Mm -hmm. Then there are personal red flags, which I believe should be linked to your own values. Mm -hmm. So if we take that health example again, if, if health is your highest value and this person you're dating wants to sit on the couch and eat KFC, well, that's gonna be a, not just a turn off, but mm. potentially a red flag because they're showing a lifestyle choice that is not aligned with your values. Mm -hmm. And that stuff tends not to change. Mm -hmm. What about, we touched on before we started, beige flags. Right. What, what's your take on, on this TikTok trend? I'm gonna rename them pink flags <laughs> yeah, because um, they're quirks. Yeah. They're quirky idiosyncrasies about mm -hmm. your partner. They're not icks, they're not turn offs. Mm -hmm. They're things that if you're in a good relationship, mm. they will be endearing. Mm. I guess that- Some of the time. <laughs> right, I, and I guess that's the thing, is if, if those interesting quirks mm. start to become icks, that's when you need to look at them. Okay, got it. Um, finally, Matt, I mean, this is a big old question, but one, one piece of advice for anyone in a relationship to make your relationship that bit better. I would say it's about your relationship with yourself and your self-talk. What are you telling yourself about yourself? Mm about your partner and the relationship? Are they positive, uplifting messages or are you leaning a little bit into self-sabotage? Okay, something for us all to focus on. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Uh, for more dating and love advice, check out Mel in Married at First Sight. Uh, do catch up if you haven't seen it. <laughs> um, and all details for Mel's website will be in the show notes below. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good tips. Hope that was useful for anyone watching who needs a bit of an expert viewpoint. Love the chat about beige flags. That's just a normal long-term relationship, right? <laughs> um, you just got married. I did. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I was just laughing that um, Mel was talking about dating apps and that's how we met on Ooh, a dating app. Yeah. That's amazing. And here we are. So it's one month later. It's one month later. Did you go on a honeymoon? No, we're going to go in October. Um, honestly, like planning... The wedding with a one-year-old was intense, so I just didn't have the capacity to plan a honeymoon. I bet <laughs> so you I was exhausted. like, I'm going to wait and then decompress, and then we have that to look forward to. Any favourite moments from the day? Um, oh my god, so many. I loved, we had a soul choir in the church, um, which is really cool, and I walked into Godspeed by Frank Ocean, and now every time I listen Ooh, to that song, it makes me cry. Oh, it was, goosebumps yeah. just from you saying that. <laughs> and did the you music cry? was amazing. Did you I did. this gospel? Playlist with Godspeed. <laughs> yeah, I love you so much. <laughs> love you. That's so um, good. Yeah, I was. I loved that. And then my other favorite moment was actually also in the church. I talked about this on the podcast. So sorry, people have watched it, but or listened to it. Sorry, but we, when we walked out of the service, I was like to the priest, "What happens?" Like, because people walk out and then they walk out again, and I was like, "How does that work?" So anyway, we walked out and then we, like snuck around the back. And my husband had put a little bottle of champagne in the fridge in the kitchen of the church. Aww. So, like, having not seen him since the night before, Aww. we just had, like, a little moment to be like, oh, my God, we just got married. Aww. So that was very cute. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, oh it was, like, God. so not glam. Obviously, the whole morning is, like, putting on the dress Aww. and doing the makeup. And, and then we were, like, in this, like, tiny little kitchen in the back of church. I think <laughs> it makes it more cute. special. It was yeah, really definitely. Yeah. Really and it's a moment for just two of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, the whole thing was amazing. We had, it was like a three day, almost three day thing. So we had a rehearsal dinner on the Friday night with just like family and bridal party. And I did a speech that night, which was really nice. And then we had the day and then we had a barbecue on the Sunday, which is really nice because one thing I will say, and actually somebody, I was speaking to somebody about this recently, the longer I go away from it, the more I'm like, oh God, it was amazing, it was amazing. But one thing is like, I'm filled with anxiety about not speaking to people enough. Mm. And it's like, seems to get worse the further away from the wedding I get. <laughs> I think everyone, I mean, bride gets carte blanche uh, yeah, to do whatever. Yeah, I, I do think like, to, I would I think no one like even that. expects to talk to the bride that much, actually. <laughs> you know, you get a little hug and I a I think chat. I was like really circulating at the beginning. And then I was like, 
No, I just it's impossible it. to do it enough. You, you never yeah. will, so yeah. But it was amazing. It was amazing. It all went pretty glitch free, apart from Ossley refusing to walk down the aisle. Oh. <laughs> Wait, who's, what happened? My daughter was oh. supposed, she's 18 months, and was she's she the supposed flower girl? to walk, yeah. So she was flower girl with our two nephews, and they were all supposed to walk down the aisle together. And they did it in the rehearsal, and it was so cute, and then we got there on the morning. <laughs> I mean, but it she is, was uh, like not so having it. It's a lot of screaming for 18 I know. months. <laughs> yeah, we I had know. twins, and that's a good thing about having more than one, because one made it. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> 50 50 chance here. Yeah, yeah, totally. And this one. Where exactly. are you thinking about for your honeymoon then? We are looking at going to Barbados. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. I'm really excited. We looked at sort of like the classic Maldives thing, yeah. but my husband gets very stir crazy and mm. I was like I just don't know if it's the right vibe for him um, and also I quite like the idea of like having you know like the nice hotel and beautiful beaches but also being able to go to like a local bar yeah, yeah. and like I'm with you meet do you know what I mean yeah. and I'm like the Maldives is obviously gorgeous yeah. and I wouldn't turn yeah. down the trip but I'm just I, I just I want a bit more I just want there to be people that live there yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and a bit of culture so um, have we, I know you guys have prepped a little wedding outfit tip each, I think, for being a guest at a wedding this summer. Can I go through what everyone would wear or recommend? Oh, I mean, I feel like I always just go to age. If I don't know what I'm, or age, is it age or age? I always get confused. But if I don't know what to wear, I always go to the brand age. Mm. The Australian one. AJ. AJ. Okay, okay. I, I think they call it age. I thought it was AJ. Oh, oh. Really? oh my gosh, that's out of a whole other let dimension. Know, Someone will let us know. Someone will tell us. But I just, those dresses always make me feel incredible. Mm. So that would be my, my go to if I'm not I sure. I love their stuff, yeah. I would say um, I love the British designer, Alexandra Miro. Mm -hmm. And obviously, called Gaia, you can't go wrong. Yes. And if you're Great going for choices. something slightly yeah, yeah. more of a younger, sexier vibe than Rad and Boa. Yeah. Yeah, Rad and Boa is so good, especially so for like good. a yeah. tropical yeah. Yeah. wedding. Except that almost everything is sheer. Yeah, that yeah. is true. I know there's always like a line. That is there? true. Yeah. <laughs> always. Oh, mine would probably be whatever it is to bring flats. <laughs> Good <laughs> tip. I can't remember how many weddings I've been doing. I'm just dying. I'm like, I want to stay, but it's so important because if you leave early because you're uncomfortable, that is the worst thing that can yeah. happen. Yeah. And no one is looking at your feet at that yeah. point. Or it's like tip to have flip flops. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Bride tips too because um, I've been to a couple of weddings where they hand out. I did. You did. Yeah. I felt like that's the yeah. one thing I did right for sure. I had. I don't um, know if we yeah, did slippers. No. Don't remember. My friends like no. <laughs> <laughs> you were having a good time, <laughs> not worrying about handing out a flip. And I was in lube, so I don't know. I don't know how I managed. But I. Wow. I'm so confused now because wasn't there a thing for a while where you don't wear black to weddings? And now I feel like everyone's wearing yeah. black to weddings. It's become more accepted because I just wore sure. black to a wedding now that I've seen people do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like a thing yeah. now. White, no, but White black no. for sure. I've yeah. seen a lot more of that, especially city weddings. I think it also depends yeah. in winter, mm, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I love, there's a dress at St. Clair, brand new small dress brand, and it's just perfect for a wedding. Sort of waterfall ruffles oh, and like cool. indigo with lovely flowers Ooh. all over it. But little baby buttons, cute. It's kind of 90s chintz, but that sounds bad. But in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> I think like 90s rom com. 90s rom com. <laughs> Thank you guys. That's it thank for today. You. Thank that you. That was absolutely nice awesome. Nice to um, meet you. Thank you so much to Sabrina, Patricia and Angela and of course Polly, Charlotte and Mel. Next week, Lisa Potter Dixon is stepping in as a guest host. She's bringing a whole load of fab friends, beauty royalty in the form of Lisa Eldridge and loads of fab summer tips and tricks. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day.